Alright, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve Lund and in this video we're gonna talk about what are the best carbs for weight loss. Time to carbo load. If you're new here, then uh, make sure you click like and subscribe as well for future videos about health and biohacking. Do it! Alright, so here are the foods that I'm gonna be ranking and uh, the criteria that I'll, you know, judge these foods on is uh, based on mostly like satiety, the calorie content, uh, how they affect your uh, hunger signaling and maybe like a little bit of the carbohydrate content as well and how does it spike your insulin levels but that's not like necessarily the most important thing the most important thing in my opinion is still the calorie deficit and uh, the kind of satiety that you experience from that so let's begin uh, on here we have first carbohydrates uh, from these buckwheat, uh, quinoa and these kind of grain foods so uh, these uh, are slightly higher on the carbohydrate content they tend to have more fiber and uh, they're let's say you know, they're not hyper palatable they're not donuts they're not cookies they're quite satiating and you know i don't know a lot of people who overeat on buckwheat or uh, quinoa because you know they're like boring foods so that's why i'll put them into the category of easy diet that um, you know yeah it's uh, very you know easy we easy to kind of under eat buckwheat uh, in a sense it's a satiating food and it kind of fills you up and it doesn't cause these massive cravings and uh, you can go on autopilot almost so to say that you don't really have to you know count how much buckwheat or grains you eat uh, it's somewhat of a easy easy mode in a sense that it uh, doesn't require a lot of willpower next up is going to be oranges or this orange juice uh, these kinds of things i uh, generally like i'm not a fan of uh, drinking juices because they tend to give you more calories um, and less satiety compared to actually eating fruit so yeah if i were to you know um, consume oranges then i would actually eat the fruit itself and oranges themselves are pretty low in calories um, you know there are a lot of water a lot of uh, not a lot of fiber but you know some vitamins uh, vitamin c antioxidants and stuff like that uh, and yeah it's like you know really difficult to overeat on oranges if you were to be um, actually eating oranges like you you would have to you know eat i don't know 10 oranges or something like that uh, to start gaining weight uh, from uh, oranges uh, but the opposite is, is true for the orange juice like if you drink you know orange juice with every meal you can add up the calories quite a lot and it doesn't really register in your brain that you actually consumed it so i'm not a really fan of uh, drinking juices i much ra rather eat the fruit eat the fruit in its uh, whole food uh, form so that's why i'll be putting it into and I'll be putting into moderation, so to say that um, you can you, you can definitely overdo it, but it's still not necessarily like the best fat loss uh, carb. It doesn't really help you to lose weight. Uh, next up is gonna be bananas. So bananas are one of the higher carb um, fruits. So a lot of glucose. Uh, but if you're taking like green bananas, then they also have this resistant resistant starch. That is more fiber and uh, lowering carbs actually helps with blood sugar regulation and also the microbiome so the microbiome can have like uh, some effects on um, you know your digestion for sure but also like the metabolism and uh, weight loss so yeah i'll be putting them into also moderation so to say like bananas if you eat like a ton of bananas all the time then the calories can add up uh, so uh, generally i wouldn't recommend eating any more than you know one to two uh, fruits per day uh, or like three at maximum uh, they're not like high calories but again like you can still subconsciously and you because there's the misconception that you can eat as much, as much fruit as you want all the time <laughs> and uh, it's healthy for you therefore you know you can eat uh, all the time but it still has calories and whether or not it comes from uh, fruit or um, you know some other carbs it do doesn't really matter like calories at the end of the day are going to be um, the determining factor whether or not you lose weight and the same applies to uh, these uh, apples and pears as well i'll be putting them into moderation so to say Next up is going to be actually the junk food, uh, cakes, pastries, uh, processed carbs that are really high in calories, high in carbs, as well as high in fats. And, uh, you know, they're not definitely like a diet food for sure. They're going to make your diet probably harder because they, they uh, hi hijack your uh, brain uh, reward mechanism to a certain extent and make you want to overeat more. So to say, like, if you avoid all cakes, then it's actually quite easy to diet if you get used to it. But, you know, kind of you break the cycle by having some, you know, junk food, donuts, and especially if you're in calorie restricting, then um, you're going to feel it much more. So to say, you get the more cravings. So I'll be putting them into the last category, which is like, if it fits your macros. So to say, like, of course, if you fit it into your uh, calorie maintenance, you can get away with basically anything, uh, but it does make your diet, let's say, you have less room for the other satiating foods, so to say. And uh, yeah, like it can work for some people, but uh, generally, you know, it's not like a weight loss uh, tool for sure. 
And the same applies to, of course, like pizza, high calories, high fats, high carbs, and not really something to be considered as a diet food. Uh, next up is uh, white bread or any kind of bread, you know, like I, I don't really eat bread. Some people like it, you know, it can help to maybe satiate them uh, much more if they have some bread with their meals. Uh, but from a, like a carbohydrate perspective, it doesn't really have like a lot of uh, weight loss benefits, you know, you know, it can maybe satiate you a little bit, but uh, that's also very subjective. But from a carbohydrate pr perspective, you know, it's not inherently good. So by putting it to like the big careful category that, uh, you know, you can have it every once in a while, but if you eat like a ton of bread, then chances are you're going to be, you know, consuming too many calories eventually. Next up are legumes and beans, lentils. Um, so these carbs, they're, you know, almost equally as much protein as they are like fiber. So uh, they tend to have like a really satiating effect from, from that angle. And uh, they also have protein, which is, you know, good for satiety as well as weight loss. Uh, and uh, generally beans are very satiating. You uh, can't really, or it's hard to overeat beans. So I'll be putting in the easy diet category uh, because yeah, like if you eat some beans, You'll probably, if you add even like a little bit of beans to your meal, then uh, that that meal has more satiety effects, and uh, you will probably stop eating uh, much faster. So you don't have to like you know, necessarily start uh, quantifying your old calories. Um, next food is uh, beetroot, uh, beets. So beets uh, are actually you know quite higher in sugar compared to some other uh, tubers, um, and uh, but it's not like it's not actual sugar, it's not fruit sugar, it's uh, slightly higher in carbs, and um, it uh, has like some other beneficial compounds like uh, nit nitrates that help with the blood flow, and uh, maybe increase exercise performance, increase, uh, you know, endothelial function, improve endothelial function, so it's a healthy car for sure, like uh, cardiovascular health, uh, but the problem is also that, you know, it also has maybe some of these oxalates, if you eat too many of these beets, as, and if you have like oxalate issues, then you may be sensitive to it. Uh, so we're putting it into moderation. Uh, like I don't know uh, any diet, or I don't know like a lot of people who eat beets like with every meal all the time. And uh, you know it's uh, definitely something that you can add maybe every every other day or so. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't be eating them all the time with every meal or something. Uh, the carrots, turnips, uh, these tubers, they're even okay for a low carb diet because they're not super high in uh, carbs, they're not high in calories, they're pretty satiating, high in fiber, so we're putting them in the easy diet category. Because, yeah, like, I don't know, it's hard to, let's say, gain weight from eating uh, too many carrots. <laughs> like, uh, if you eat, it's, you get full and your, you know, stomach will explode first to, uh, for it, that to happen. Cereal, <laughs> cereal, breakfast cereal, frosted flakes, cocoa puffs, those stuff, uh, Definitely high in carbs, high in sugar, very hyper palatable for sure if you like uh, combine it with milk and you know it's not inherently good for weight loss in my opinion. I'll be putting them into be careful. Um, I think it's definitely healthier than the um, these uh, if it fits your macros type of thing and you can definitely have like some you know granola or something it can definitely fit into uh, your calorie maintenance much more easily than like a pizza because it's still although it's high in carbs and high in sugar it's not high in fats so the calorie Calorie content is still um, moderate compared to these uh, junk food. Dried fruit, uh, so uh, raisins, dried apricots, dried plums, dates, uh, those things, uh, because they're dried, they're also higher in calories compared to regular fruit, and uh, they also have more sugar, tend to, because of the, and you know, they're, they're dried, there's not a lot of water in it, so you're basically it's easier to overeat these dried fruits than it is to overeat actual fruit because you're not getting the water, you're only getting this <laughs> dried, dried up plum and uh, it's much easier. It's like as, a snack, as a snack, the dried fruit is definitely more um, damaging or more, more calorie uh, containing. So I'll be putting it, be, be careful. Like I wouldn't, yeah, it's uh, too uh, easy to overeat those kinds of uh, fru foods. Pineapple. So pineapple is an interesting thing because it uh, is okay in the, Carbohydrate content is not super high in carbs, although it's maybe similar to bananas or oranges. Uh, but it also has like these digestive enzymes, uh, mostly bromelain for the digestion of protein. So it can, um, you know, help with breaking down foods and uh, just improve maybe digestion and gut health. 
So I'll be, but I'll be putting it into, you know, moderation. Or actually, I'll be putting it into easy diet because, you know, your um, it's going to help you to digest the food better, so to say. So uh, you're going to be feel feeling also maybe slightly better, uh, especially if you're eating like a larger volume of foods when you're dieting. And that's why I'll be putting it into this. It just makes your life uh, a bit easier. <laughs> uh, oatmeal, <coughs> uh, oatmeal, is uh, also uh, you know not uh, not super high in calories. It's similar to you know uh, cereal and bread, and it has a little bit more uh, fiber than those foods. Um, but I'll be putting it into moderation, so to say that uh, you don't necessarily have to worry about oatmeal. And it's not not hard. Or it's not easy to overeat on oatmeal, uh, and it does have like a satiety effect because of the higher fiber. But it's not like da as dangerous or as harmful as um, these uh, cereals or uh, bread, in my opinion. Uh, cream of rice, cream of wheat. So uh, basically, <laughs> the uh, non-fiber version of uh, these uh, oats and uh, stuff. Um, it uh, has similar calories, but it has much less fiber, and it does have a much higher glycemic index. So you will experience more of these uh, blood sugar spikes and ups and downs from eating this cream of rice or cream of wheat. Uh, so your satiety signals are going to be most, more messed up, and maybe you'll be more dependent off uh, basically eating the carbs all the time. So I'll be putting it to be careful just because of that. Um, and it's like, you know, just pudding, in a sense. There's no uh, real satiety signal that you get from it, because, you know... You don't have to chew it a lot. You can swallow it almost uh, without chewing at all. And uh, the chewing p part itself, uh, chewing the food, some food, you know, because of the high fiber and uh, high water content, you're kind of uh, receiving the satiety signal from just the chewing process itself, which is actually quite um, impactful. So if you're like drinking your calories, you don't really recognize that you consume the calories um, as much as you do from actually chewing food. So that's why the juices tend to be you know, not really optimal for uh, getting the satiety signal, at least. Spinach, uh, or these uh, greens, I will also be putting them into moderation. Uh, although, like, uh, spinach is one of the lowest calorie uh, vegetables out there. It's also quite, you know, a, a bit more protein and has, like, iron and stuff. Uh, I will be put, still putting it into moderation because of the same, uh, the oxalate properties. So if you eat too much spinach, then you may get, like, some digestive issues for sure, and uh, maybe if you have kidney issues, then that can also like flare up. So I wouldn't be putting it into this ad libidum category because of that. Uh, like if you were to eat uh, spinach, like, I don't know, one kilo of spinach a day or 500 grams of spinach a day, then you're gonna probably have like some dig digestive issues. So I'm putting it into moderation uh, because of that. Although uh, a spinach and uh, any other salads are a great addition to a diet because of the volume of uh, food that you get compared to the small amount of calories and the sat satiety effect. Um, cruciferous vegetables uh, or this cabbage and stuff I'll be putting them into ad libidum because uh, yeah they're also basically same as spinach or actually you, you, you can put like spinach next to that it doesn't really matter uh, you just have to kind of know some people don't get any uh, oxalate issues at all and the same applies to these uh, vegetables that they're very low in calories they're relatively high in fiber has a little bit of protein actually compared to some other carbs and uh, yeah just makes the diet very easy like uh, you would b before you can gain weight from eating broccoli or cabbage you would have to eat yeah like several kilograms but the thing with uh, these uh, vegetables is that you have to kind of cook them uh, before you eat them so eating raw cabbage and raw broccoli and raw cauliflower is not the best idea uh, because of the they will inhibit the absorption of iodine and uh, that can cause like some uh, thyroid dysfunction or uh, some symptoms of low thyroidism hypothyroidism uh, so yeah whenever you do cook uh, a lot of uh, vegetable or when you eat vegetable vegetables you have to cook, cook them and uh, not have them uh, raw and yeah the, i'll be putting the other vegetables here as well you know these tomatoes bell peppers radishes uh, and stuff like that because yeah like they're basically very low in calories high in fiber high in water and you just uh, stop eating before you gain weight on that um, sweet potatoes so uh, sweet potatoes are slightly uh, lower in calories and lower in carbs than regular white potatoes and um, they don't have like a huge you know, nutritional difference. I'll be putting them into easy diet. So uh, 
because potatoes are quite satiating, uh, as was shown as is seen in research, that uh, one of the highest satiating foods uh, is actually potatoes next to like protein sources. So that's why we putting it in the easy diet. Um, like there are some diets, some people who have lost a lot of weight by eating only potatoes. Uh, so I wouldn't like recommend it, but uh, it is possible and kind of goes to show how satiating these uh, tubers and uh, potatoes tend to be. And yeah, I, I do, uh, whenever I do eat carbs, then they tend to be potatoes and they are, I think, uh, quite satiating. Corn, you know, I don't re eat corn at all. And I think that it's also hard to overeat corn if you're uh, basically eating the corn on the uh, stick, so to say. Uh, because it's a, like a strenuous process, actually having to chew and uh, stuff like that. But if you take corn and turn it into popcorn or turn it into corn tortillas, then uh, that's going to change the situation completely because you're uh, changing the food composition of that and you're making the food that much easier to uh, eat uh, so, uh, and more hyper palatable, more enjoyable. So you want to eat it more. So I'll be putting it into moderation because of that. Uh, the corn itself on the stick, the... Uh, Corn in its uh, aboriginal form is uh, is definitely like maybe like easy diet because yeah I don't know how you could overeat the corn like it's not a super tasty food uh, but it, uh, yeah if you're eating uh, corn let's say in the cor cor tortillas or uh, in popcorn then it can definitely make you overeat so I'll be putting it in moderation uh, chips potato chips that is uh, I'll for sure be putting them into if it fits your macros. So if it is made of the, if it's store-bought chips, then it's also high in fats in addition to the carbs. So they're much higher in calories than regular potatoes. So yeah, you can definitely have them if you would like, like I, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> like if I were to have like some chips, like if I wanted to have it, then I would make my own like sweet potato chips at home that have less fat and less calories. And uh, you'd be better off as a result of that. Cookies as well, if it's with your macros, not a weight loss uh, food for sure and too, too much calories not worth it in a sense uh, pumpkin or squash is also I think uh, easy diet because yeah like very hard to overeat pumpkin you can use it even as an alternative to uh, you know uh, you can use the pumpkin to make puree and the same applies to these cruciferous vegetables you can use uh, these cruciferous vegetables to uh, or like cauliflower specifically to make like cauliflower pizza crusts, cauliflower uh, rice, cauliflower mashed potatoes, whatever it is, cauliflower bread, <laughs> or you can be very creative with it and you can swap it out. So that's why cauliflower is um, pretty versatile food and the same applies to this uh, pumpkin. Uh, you can make pumpkin uh, puree and even like a zucchini, like zucchini pizza or something. Uh, pasta or spaghetti. For that, I think it's gonna be uh, be careful because um, it's a more uh, hyper palatable food than other 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 the previous ones because you know spaghetti usually is quite you know enjoyable if you have like bolognese bolognese sauce or something uh, meatballs with the spaghetti people tend to overeat on pasta all the time and it's one of the biggest like weaknesses for a lot of people so. Uh, but it's not like as high in calories as these, um, you know, these processed foods. But I'll be putting in, be, be, be careful. Uh, French fries, depends on where it is. You know, if it's homemade French fries, then it's just like, be careful. Uh, it's very hyper palatable and makes you want to eat it. But it's not super high in fats if it's homemade from, you know, regular sweet potatoes or stuff. If the fries are, you know, from McDonald's, then it's much higher in fats, dense in calories. So it will be richer macros, but I'll be putting that into be careful. Uh, beans, uh, green beans, or asparagus, or something uh, like that, artichoke, these kinds of things. I'll be putting that into ad libitum, because again, like the, one of the lowest calorie foods out there, very low in carbs, and uh, they also have like these more resistant starch that improves the microbiome, and uh, yeah, hard to overeat, let's say. It's uh, hard to overeat on beans, because it's a very boring food, not really super tasty, but it does fill you up quite nicely. And the same applies to uh, uh, these uh, celery, cucumber, and all the other greens. Very hard to overeat and gain uh, calories, or gain weight from that. Very like they do have calories, but uh, very close to zero almost. Uh, jelly beans, <laughs> gummy bears, or candies, whatever's 
um, yeah, I'll be putting that into if it fits your macros as well. So, you know, does give you energy maybe for a workout or satiate your um, sugar cravings. But again, it's very hyper palatable and you can start to overeat. Same applies to chocolate, very high in calories. I'm not against eating, I'm not against eating chocolate if it's like, you know, good, uh, healthy, maybe dark chocolate. That will be a better alternative than regular milk chocolate. But uh, again, it's uh, quite high in calories and uh, may make you, uh, may, may, may ignite you the desire to start eating more. <laughs> rice, um, so uh, rice is uh, interesting. I'll be putting that into moderation because it's uh, quite high in car, not yeah, high in carbs, but it's not that high in fiber. So, um, and it does maybe fill you up like it's uh, not a super satiating, not a super uh, palatable food. It's uh, satiating and does fill you up, but it's uh, you know something to be kind of a moderate in my opinion. Uh, grapefruit is also interesting, similar to pineapple, because it uh, has, you know, fructose, uh, but it's not high in calories. And the enzymes in the grapefruit help with like insulin production and helps to improve insulin resi resistance. So to regulate your blood sugar better, so uh, maybe it, ca it can be useful for preventing like this massive rebound in the, in the, the blood sugar and uh, keeps you satiated as a result of that as well. And uh, lastly... We have regular white potatoes, which I mentioned are one of the more satiating foods in the world. Uh, so I think uh, having uh, like uh, some uh, potatoes in the diet may uh, make it more uh, satiating and definitely uh, also improves like some of the uh, nutritional profile. Like there's a lot of potassium in potatoes and you can cover a lot of your daily potassium needs with uh, just potatoes. Uh, so yeah, I do, I do personally whenever I do eat carbs and I'll have like regular white potatoes. Uh, because of the satiety effect and I do kind of taste uh, good without making you like overeat unless you make uh, fries out of them <laughs> so there you have it um, this is the list of the best carbs for uh, weight loss in my opinion if you want to know how to improve your body composition and health with strategic carb cycling and intermittent fasting then check out my metabolic autophagy masterclass but that's it for this video make sure you click the like and subscribe notification bell as well my name is Seem. stay optimized stay empowered